Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on this Monday. I'm Journey Taylor and here's a look at the stories we're following today. Israel's ground and air offensive is putting more pressure on Gaza. Now at the White House, President Biden is pressing Israel to ramp up humanitarian support in the region. Plus, the community of Lewiston, Maine, spends the weekend in mourning following the state's deadliest mass shooting. Coming up, new reports show law enforcement had the shooter on their radar. And former Vice President Mike Pence suspended his campaign this past weekend in a speech in Las Vegas. Now his one-time ally, former President Trump, is calling on his endorsement. We'll have more on those headlines soon, but first a look at weather. I see the rain is moving out, but don't let the sun trick you. It is still chilly outside, meteorologist Nathan Scott. What do you see? Good Monday afternoon journey. <laughs> yeah, it is certainly a different air maps we're dealing with after that soggy weekend. Much colder air has really poured its way in here from north to northwest. Still a little bit of rain lingering into southeast Arkansas. So if you're watching us into Monticello, McGee, Dermot, Chico County through Ashley County, that rain will eventually move out, but it's probably going to take until about two o'clock for the rain to exit the entire state. Temperatures though, they are on the cool side. 45 in Clinton, 44 in Hot Springs. You see the clouds are continuing to move off to the east. We've got that wind from the north about 10 to 20 miles per hour gusts 25 to as high as 30 miles per hour at times and that does add a bite to the air so here's what it feels like out there it feels like 33 right now in Stuttgart it feels like 38 in Searcy it feels like 38 in Hot Springs it feels like 41 here in the capital city highs today well below the average we should be seeing numbers into the upper 60s they're only warming up into the low 50s and we've got a freeze warning in effect for pretty much all of Arkansas tonight and also tomorrow night. That means temperatures will likely drop below freezing. I'll have those chilly numbers and let you know how long this cold snap will be sticking around coming up. All right, Nathan, well, thank you. We begin with developing news. Dermont police are investigating a homicide that happened earlier Sunday morning. Around 2 a.m., officers responded to a call about a disturbance at 302 North Shepherd Street. When they arrived, 27 year old Joshua Thompson was found on the ground suffering from multiple gunshots. He was then taken to a nearby hospital where he later died. Dermont police has not released any names of any suspects, but we will continue following this story for more information. Just visit THV11.com. And Texarkana search is underway for the suspects involved in a deadly shooting. Three people were killed and three others are in the hospital recovering. All six victims reportedly range in age from 19 to 31 years old. It happened Saturday night when a fight started at a party on the Texas side of State Line Avenue. Police say during the fight, two men pulled out rifles and started shooting. So far, the names of the victims have not been released. Meanwhile, in Pine Bluff, a search is underway for a suspect who shot and injured a man. On your screen, you see 23-year-old Henry Raymond Arnold Jr. He is wanted for a shooting that happened on Friday. Police responded to a call and found a man with a gunshot wound. He was taken to Jefferson Regional with non-life-threatening injuries. If you have any information on Arnold Jr., you're asked to call the local authorities. Well, thousands of people in Maine are returning to school and work this morning after last week's mass shooting. The city of Lewiston held a vigil last night to honor the 18 people killed by Robert Card. He was found dead on Friday after a massive two day search. Since then, we've been told that a statewide alert warning law enforcement about the gunman was sent out last month. Jeff Pegas has more from Lewiston. This is where police say they found the body of the mass shooter Friday night inside a trailer at a recycling center roughly 10 miles from where the shootings took place. Just an incredible sense of relief for our city. The gunman, 40-year-old Army Reservist Robert Card, used to work at the recycling center but was fired two weeks ago. That particular location was cleared twice previously. This comes as the Associated Press reports a statewide alert warning Maine law enforcement about CARD went out last month. Nearby, Sagatahawk County Sheriff Joel Mary says he issued the alert 
after the Army Reserve notified him about threats Card made against his military base and other soldiers. He sent a deputy to Card's home for a welfare check, but Card was not there. Lewiston Police Chief David St. Pierre declined to comment on Sheriff Mary's claims. Is there anything that you would do differently? Uh, you know, we're going to learn from some mistakes. I'm sure we've made a couple along the way. What did all of those gunshots sound like to you? It's so hard to describe. Because behind every single one, I know that somebody was lined up with it. You know, Tammy Aslan was in the just-in-time recreation bowling alley with her 10-year-old daughter, Tony, Wednesday night but got separated when the gunman opened fire. I can't even begin to explain the amount of things that go through your mind in those precious moments, you know. Aslin called her parents, who rushed to the scene. Her father says he waited for news on the 10-year-old for what felt like hours. Then he got a call from an unknown number. And I just said, hello. And when I said hello, I heard four of the most beautiful words in the world. I'll never forget. What did you say to your grandpa? Mm, I'm not dead, Pepe. And I just broke down. <laughs> and it was pretty tough. But I was happy. Why did you think that was important to tell him? To start off with that so he could not be so worried anymore. It was another survivor of the shooting here who helped Tony to safety. The 10-year-old says that she saw at least one person shot and killed. And this morning, her mother is concerned about the long-term effects that might have on her daughter. Jeff Begay is CBS News, Lewiston, Maine. Well, over the weekend, former Vice President Mike Pence dropped out of the Republican presidential race. Pence's decision might be the beginning of a shakeup for the Republican presidential contest, potentially prompting others to assess their this own campaigns and whether they should follow suit and consider rallying around a Trump alternate. We always knew this would be an uphill battle, but I have no regrets. The only thing that would have been harder than coming up short would have been if we'd never tried at all. Well, former President Trump called on Pence to endorse him despite having pressured Pence relentlessly to overturn the 2020 election results. Sources close to Pence say he is unlikely to quickly make an endorsement. The United Auto Workers Union have reached a tentative deal with Stellantis, owner of Chrysler, Dodge and Jeep. The contract agreement includes a 25% wage increase over a four and a half year period, which is similar to the deal reached with Ford last week. But as UAW members return to work at Ford and Stellantis, the union has expanded its strike against General Motors, adding a Tennessee facility that builds Cadillac and GMC SUVs. GM says it is disappointed, but will continue to negotiate in good faith. Israel's military says it has expanded its ground operation inside Gaza Monday as it continues its mission to destroy Hamas. It follows heavy bombing over the weekend, causing large numbers of Palestinian civilian casualties. Hamas also released new proof of life of some of its hostages. Skylar Henry reports. These are the images from a video Hamas released Monday of Israeli hostages calling on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to agree to a ceasefire and release Hamas prisoners so they can be freed. It's not known if the woman spoke willingly or whether they were told what to say. The same day, people in Jerusalem held a moment of silence for the hostages, empty beds representing the more than 200 captives comes as Israel's military says it's expanded its operation into Gaza. Israel Defense Forces released video of what it says are tanks in the Hamas-controlled territory. Israel's military says troops destroyed anti-tank missile launchers and killed four prominent Hamas operatives. With flares and smoke hovering over the Gaza skyline, displaced Palestinian civilians are calling for more humanitarian aid as conditions continue to worsen. United Nations officials say over the weekend, thousands broke into warehouses holding badly needed supplies. 
In a call Sunday with Prime Minister Netanyahu, President Biden reiterated Israel's right to defend itself, but also said that Israel needs to be within the laws of war. They've got to that, that extra burden of making sure that they're doing everything they can to protect innocent life. That's hard for any military fighting in an urban environment. The violence is also expanding to the West Bank, where four Palestinians were killed in clashes with Israeli forces. And sirens sounded in Jerusalem as a warning of incoming rockets launched from Gaza. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. And a house in a southern Israeli city was also badly damaged by a rocket from Gaza. The annual drawdown of Lake Hamilton in Hot Springs starts today, and so does a huge project. Intergy is once again expected to lower the lake level by five feet for cleanup around docks and flood walls. At the same time, city contractors will be installing a massive water pipeline under Lake Hamilton. A section around Highway 270 Bridge will be closed to boaters starting today for the next three weeks. That pipeline project is taking water from Lake Washita to increase the city's water supply.